Well, greetings. I hope that this video will come out all right. I'm here as an ambassador to our King, Yahshua, our Messiah. And I'm calling out to you that are of the 144,000, though you who know since long ago that it was, if you're in the loon, there too. So if you've been with me in the past or in other places but in spirit you've been going through the same things through these churches and, and you've called them down on their doctrines and everything else just like Revelations chapter 2 and chapter 3 we're speaking of and some of you men that I'm speaking to right now I mean, my spirit, it feels like, you know, there's a vacuum cleaner sucked onto it because of y'all. And because of this, I mean, you're supposed to be my brothers, my sisters. You're supposed to be of my family, of our king's family and of our father's family that you don't even know how to get to because you haven't even stayed at the feet of the schoolmaster yet. And the schoolmaster is the laws. Read it for yourself. I believe it's in Yachinon chapter 8. It talks that you got to go through the schoolmaster to even get to the Father. But you're not going to get to the Father. He's going to then give you to his Son. And if you haven't had this done yet, you're not even reborn. Take it to heart. Suck it in. Now for the rest of y'all that are just tuning in, I do say greetings to you. Uh, if you are a believer, and in these last days your mind and your ears and your heart has been circumcised, and you can hear the words that are coming from my mouth, I pray you forgive me for going to be a little bit frank here. Uh, please listen. I say shalom to you. There's Holy Spirit on this video, okay? So if you're here just to find fault or something, you're not going to listen to the full end because you get offended from what I say from these holy scriptures and what the 144,000 will teach and the rest of you won't be teaching okay you'll be known as those that are you know said oh go on out here you know Messiah is out there because you think you're the Messiah you don't do what he told you to do he told you to keep a seventh day Sabbath and you have to create a lunar Sabbath to defy this because you say the Sabbath was lost. Well, you've got no information. Oh, by the way, if y'all don't want to hear this, you better get out now. Because if you click off here after I start speaking truth and you don't get looking for it, then you're denying Holy Spirit because he's in this video. Okay, so when you click it off with anger or whatever else, you better listen to the end. They tell you it may not work too well for you if you deny Holy Spirit. That's, that's a holy cow kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Now, a while back, I'm going to give you this kind of like a story, okay? Way back in the early 80s, I uh, became a member of the House of Yahweh. It's a cult out of Abilene, Texas, located in Clyde now. And at the time, it, it, it was the name, the House of Yahweh. 
And I remember when I was a real young child on the porch in my mother's house, I was reading the dictionary, and I got up to the wise, and I saw Yahweh. And I went to the Catholic Church where uh, uh, we had uh, school, uh, North Broad Street School in Oneida, and right next door was a Catholic Church. And we, during certain classes, would have to go over to the uh, the convent or whatever you know and uh, they had school there for us to learn and, I, and they were talking this God and Lord and, and I raised my hand and well what do you want Alan you know well why don't you call him Yahweh that's his name you know he said he's not God so the nun would whoop me and take me to the priest who whooped me who took me home for my mom to whoop me so when my dad got home from work he could whoop me and this only went on a couple times when I came to realize, you know, at a very young age, it's like, wow, for some reason nobody likes Yahweh. So I went back to calling on God and Lord and these other things, and I'm sure that many of your lives are quite similar to that. But I held on to certain things, and I didn't realize until after I was already in Texas, had a vision, our king came to me, everything, on Mount Potosi in uh, Nevada, just outside of Sin City, where I was uh, called from my father's house and told, you know, you're to leave your father's house and go build your father's house with gold. So I bought gold equipment and everything. I put every penny I had together. I got in my van and I went off to go find gold for my father to build his house with. And, <laughs> and the stuff I did had a shot, my own shotgun in my mouth and they stole my gold. And But I did keep my shotgun. I, I begged them for that. You know, the gold, it's like it's our father's. He giveth, he taketh away. But please don't take my shotgun, man. You know. <laughs> so they took the shell out and gave it to me. But I was always, always, when I saw a truth, I held on to it. Now, before I held on to it, I researched it. And that's what you men should be doing. And when I went to the house of Yahweh, I had uh, just quit being a lying preacher because of the material that I got from there. And you have to admit, the booklets, you know, they do have truth in them. Uh, now that uh, Yehuda Verner's there, David Verner, uh, he's been manipulating a lot of things. We know that he burned all the uh, baptism booklets, you know, when I brought out the truth in there that they were calling me a heretic over and wanting to kick me out of that place. And I showed them in their own booklet where it was they that was usurping authority from our king. Which kind of led me here another time, you know, being brought up before judgment there where they... Uh, sent me to the gate and lied about my wife saying she hated me, never wanted to see me again. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, here I am. You go get her, let her tell me to my face that she hates me and never wants to see me again. And I will leave. I'll never darken the, uh, you know, I'll shake the dust off my sandals and I'll be on my way. They beat me up. They threw me in jail three nights and three days. And when the cops got there, I told them, when they had me handcuffed, this is sir, please. And I was really big at that time. It was before I broke my back. I was huge. My arms was like, Rah! I could rip out the sleeves, okay, before I busted my back. My legs were, I mean, I could pick up the whole back end of a full station wagon off the ground so someone could, you know, put things up under there, okay? But I'm not talking about physical strength. I had the strength of not breaking our Father's commandments. And that's what salvation is. This is what you should be learning. You shouldn't be into this lunar, lunatic stuff. You should keep the Ten Commandments by keeping the 613 laws, give or take, which define how the Ten Commandments must be kept. Do that so our Father will then, when you show the Father you'll honor Him by keeping His laws, and you're not doing that when you're doing this. He told you there's a seventh day Sabbath. Why don't you keep it? I mean, if you want to fast on any day of the week, that's perfectly fine. Fast every Sabbath if you want. But you have to keep the laws. There's no law against you fasting. Now, if you want to practice a lunar Sabbath in addition to the seventh-day Sabbath, 
I don't know. I mean, if you want to make your own feast, Amos talked about those things, you know. He says, you know, remove from me the noise of your joyous songs, you know, for those pagan festivals. Get it out of my way. I don't want to hear it. And what do you think he's doing with your lunar Sabbath? Okay? Now, one of your biggest arguments is that, well, it's a Gregorian calendar. Well, I'm going to show you the impossible. I'm going to show you how to go Sabbath to Sabbath to Sabbath to Sabbath without ever, you can burn every Gregorian calendar, you can take black magic marker and put it over your screen so you can't see what day it is, okay, on your cell phones and stuff, the same thing, so you, you can't see what day it is, but I'll show you how you can go from Sabbath to Sabbath by counting. All you got to do is count six, and I know you don't know how to do that. You have to, you know, you got to, you got to do things different because Bill Hawkins, in the place that was just given a warning that Yahshua is coming and he's going to bring judgment against that place and it's going to be turned over to the hundred and forty-four thousand. The whole earth is for crying out loud. And if you're not going to keep these commandments and laws. I'm going to explain to you real quick in the scriptures. Let's get right to this, okay? Therefore, seeing we have this ministry. What ministry is that? This whole book was written for the 144,000 in this last time. Enoch was told, you know, told us about it, the righteous ones. These scriptures were written for them so that they can give it to others. They can hear it, and they'll obey but you ain't obeying. And I'm going to show you exactly why right here. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Well, I'm telling you, man, just like Daniel talked about, okay, where uh, Satan was given power over the saints to, you know, to drive them haggard? Well, I'm pretty haggard over the emails and such that you people keep bringing up. And you brought it right from the start, which we'll get to, but I'm going to show you here why you can't see. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of Yahweh deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, condemning ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of Yahweh. But if our glad tiding, our God spell, our uh, testimony be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And what is this testimony? What is this teaching, this glad tiding? It's a seventh day Sabbath. Okay, that's what this is. That's what this discussion is going to show you. You should have never abandoned it. And because you have, I would repent severely. I would do whatever I could to repent. Because I'm going to show you how silly it is. If I prove you false in just one point of your flimsy doctrine that I hate to bring anything on because it's dumb. <laughs> I mean, these things are for those that think they got to do more than keep the Ten Commandments by keeping the 613 laws so you can be given from our Father. Once you learn how to honor our Father by keeping them, He'll give you to His Son. He'll introduce you. Say, hey, Son, here's another one for you. And that way you can reverence Yahshua only. That's all there is of the salvation. Keeping these laws you're not doing. You invented things that you cannot even stand on. Repent. But if our glad tiding be hid, the seventh day Sabbath be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not in the seventh day Sabbath. Get over it, you lunatics. Come on, it's time to get a backbone. Get back. Admit yourself that you was wrong because I'm going to tell you what. The 144,000 are not going to teach what you're teaching. And we're going to run you down. 
you may end up getting stoned. People will be so upset with you wanting to teach lies because that's all they've had is lies their entire life for crying out loud when a child, you know, gets up in the morning and says, Mom, it's 273 more days till Christmas. A child can count days? Noah's on an ark? For how long? 150 days? How did he count them? He didn't have a Gregorian calendar. How the hell did he know there was 150 days? Well, guess what? Noah went, uh, first day, second day, third day. They didn't even open the windows. So how would he know? I mean, couldn't see the moon. Certainly within the 40 days when it rained and those windows were all kept closed, he didn't look for no crescent, wouldn't see it anyway. How the hell did he keep your lunar Sabbath? He didn't. You're liars. Repent. In whom the God of this world has blinded your minds if you don't believe in the seventh day Sabbath and that you can actually count six work days off and rest on a seventh day from the time Yahweh created that until now, then it's because you've got a God that's blinding your mind. And I rebuke that God. I hope you know that you can repent because you told me many years ago you was of the 144,000, didn't you, Mike? Terry? Shul? Stefania? Jack's now dead? He can't repent of it? How many of you? It's tearing homes apart. <laughs> It's crazy and insane. That's why it's a lunar tick Sabbath. And even to look for the crescent, you're doing nothing but God worship. You don't look for a crescent of the moon. David's out in the middle of a field and he tells Jonathan, Behold, tonight is the new moon. Well, how did he know that? You can't tell me what day a new moon is when you use the crescent. But David knew. Every 14.765 days from a new moon or a full moon would be a new moon or a full moon. And then every 14.765 days after that comes out to about 29 and a half days to a lunar month. But they knew when a new moon would take place. And then they looked for the crescent. That's why David was out in the field waiting for three days he was going to wait. Not four. But three, because usually you'll see the crescent on the first or second day, or if you didn't, for certain on the third day is when they would end the new moon festivals, which were not Sabbath days either. <laughs> Only the seventh new moon is a Sabbath day. It's a Feast of Trumpets, okay, or the Day of Trumpets, and it's a Sabbath. It's the only one of the new moons that's a Sabbath. Then you got, uh, well, let's just go on. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious testimony, the teaching of Messiah, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine unto you. That's why you can't hear me, because you're too proud. You're arrogant. You think that being one of the 144,000 is easy? You guys skated right through most of it. I don't even know if you are, but I'm just crying out to you. Hopefully you may be, you know, because you went through the same school I did. You failed miserably here, okay? For we preach not ourselves. Talking about the disciples, which I am a disciple of. I'm a member of our king's body in these last days, the holy temple. I'm one of the 144,000. I've got the documentation, and you all know it. When you read Enoch, you know I'm telling you the truth, and I'm telling you, your doctrine is not going to be taught by the 144,000. If you teach it, you know right now you're not one of them. 
And this goes for any of you out there that's been through the churches, gone through whatever, and you want to say you're of the 144,000, well, I'm going to tell you, if you don't teach a Seventh-day Sabbath, whether it's shown on a Gregorian calendar or used by counting off with toothpicks or a menorah, wonder why them Jews had menorahs all the time back then with seven places to put canned oil. Certainly, they'd have to lose count on Sabbaths. For we preach not ourselves, but Yahshua, the Messiah, and ourselves, your servants for our King's sake. I'm your servant. I'm a servant to everybody. And, you know, I'm telling you, I'm rebuking you, frankly. Stop this bullshit. For Yahweh, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of Yahweh in the face of Yahshua our King. That's right. But we have this treasure in earthly vessels, talking these holy temples we live in, that the excellency of the power may be of Yahweh and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. No, I'm just wore out, man. She's, she's, Satan's got me plumb wore out and using you to help her. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Okay? Always bearing about in the body the dying of Yahshua, that the life also of Yahshua might be made manifest in my holy temple, which should be in yours as well. This book was written specifically for the 144,000 and those that'll hear, because they could also listen to what one of the 144,000 teaches, and they'll find it in their scriptures, and they'll prove it for themselves when they do. And if they read the scriptures, they'll hear it. And if you clowns out there that are keeping this uh, lunar Sabbath, by the end of this video, still feel that you should, shame on you. You're nothing, okay? You're, you're nothing. Now, here in Hebrews uh, chapter 4, it tells you something about the seventh day Sabbath. It says, let us therefore fear lest the promise being left us. Now we've got a promise. There's a promise that was left to us. Which is the subject matter of Hebrews 4. And I, I know many years ago when I first discovered the truth, I brought down many a preacher on this very verse here because they would say, oh well there's nowhere in the scriptures in the New Testament where it tells you to keep a Sabbath. Oh yeah? Well, that is the subject matter of what we're going to read right here is the seventh day Sabbath. It's a promise being left us. Who? The 144,000 that we may share it with this world. Some are trying to keep it, but they're not keeping it right, correctly. We're going to teach them all these things by our example. And you're setting a really crappy example. You who's out there saying you're of 144,000 and yet teaching against the laws, manufacturing lies, and then just disposing of the scriptures that would prove you wrong so you can stay in your deception. I mean, what do I got to do? Send you all a roll of toilet paper so you can clean the shit out of your ears? better repent. No, I don't feel like Moshe up there on the rock when he hit it twice, you know, and he wasn't even supposed to hit it. He was supposed to speak to that rock and without bitching at the children, but I'm told to frankly rebuke you in front of everybody so that they'll fear that they're not going to come up against me. No, sir, because if they do, they'll be fleeing seven directions, believe you me, because I'm going to speak the judgments and the truth that come from these holy scriptures and our king is my brother. And he wants to be yours as well, so you better repent. 
Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left, left us of entering into his rest, his Sabbath. Seventh day Sabbath and this rest are interchangeable in the scriptures. When it talks about rest, he's talking about a seventh day Sabbath. He's speaking of it right here. Let us therefore fear and do fear. Lest the promise being left of us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. You lunatics, you're falling short of it. You quit the seventh day Sabbath because you hate Bill Hawkins. Well, I'm telling you, when I first went there, we that's all we did was keep the truth. It was years later when he discovered that greed, the money he could make from it, and the power he could hold over the people and have as many wives as he wants, promising all his slaves that he ran their ear through a doorpost for him to release him of the debt that he owed him. After I'm the one that showed him it, I was the first one on the earth that ever had my ear run through with an all. And I brought him this big ass all boy, and it had a tip on it about as big as my pinky there. And I'm like, Bill, run my ear through the door. He's like, for what? I says, because I love our king, and I never want to leave his house. I want to be in the house of our king forever. Well, this is called the house of Yahweh. I want to be of the house of the king. Well, Bill wouldn't have nothing to do with it, so he sent me off to uh, all two or three elders that he had at the time. That's all there was when I first went to the house of Yahweh. There was only about 54 people in it. We were sending out all sorts of literature, but there were only around 54 people there. But anyway, he taught the Sabbath. So after you all prove them liars... You throw the whole baby and everything. Your whole kitchen you throw out in the bath water. Because, well, Bill Hawkins keeps a seventh day Sabbath and now he buys and he sells on it and, and he, he cooks and sells it to people on the Sabbath. So, oh, the seventh day Sabbath's got to be, oh, they, they must have forgot it. Yeah, that's what they did. Hey, everyone who'll listen, who's got a tickle in here, come on Listen, did you know that the Jews forgot the seventh day Sabbath when it was? But through calculation, yep, Yahweh created the moon like on the fourth day. And on the seventh day, Yahweh rested and he said, man is to work six days and the seventh he shall rest. And it's a perpetual covenant forever. And here it says that it's a promise being left. But those lunatics want you to think that somehow these Yadayim, which are now called Jews, or those that keep the law, want to, have forgotten when the Sabbath was. So now you got to calculate it, though it was created on the fourth day, or made on the fourth day, and our father rested on the seventh, there's no calculation in there that would support the lunar ticks to begin with. <coughs> but people want more, they think they got to have more and more, and they make this faith into a religion. And they want a following, and they turn it into a church. If you're of the body of Messiah, you need to abandon these falsehoods. I'm telling you, become a body. I'm a mouthpiece right now for our king, okay? I might be the lips, and you might be a finger or a hair. Be glad you can be there. Get yourself rooted back into that vine. If you're starting to click in your head here that you've been full of shit right straight up to your eyebrows... I suggest you repent bitterly. Don't you ever do this stuff again. And we got plenty more to go. Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us 
was the glad tidings preached the they got gospel here the testimony the faith I'm gonna say faith for unto us was the faith preached because once the schoolmaster is done with you you and you honor the father the law there you honor the father by keeping it and he gives you to the son well once he does that the schoolmaster done its job because you're never going to sin willfully again so therefore you become into the faith at that point that's what faith is once you've been tested and tried and given to our king that's when you start getting faith that's when you get this reborn thing going on that the world has come short of, just like you do. And if you should seem to come short of it, the seventh day Sabbath. For unto us was the faith preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, into Sabbath. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my Sabbath, my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spoke in a certain place of the seventh day on the wise, and Yahweh did rest the seventh day day from all his works <coughs> well without the Gregorian calendar how the hell can they can they keep Saturn day because everyone who keeps the Sabbath the seventh day Sabbath are Saturn worshippers see us us uh, lunatics well we don't worship you know Saturn because you know only like twice a year do the every uh uh, what is it? The uh, 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th come about on a Saturn's day. So, you know, when it does like that, it's, well, you know, we don't, we don't follow the Gregorian calendar. We're lunar ticks. Uh, but those were the seventh day Sabbath, man. You know, because Yahweh had this Gregorian calendar back when he made the heavens and the earth. And in six days and then he rested on the seventh day he had the Gregorian calendar apparently because it must have got lost because they only reinvented it or something because you know it's evil anyone keeping the seventh day Sabbath it's, it's they're a Saturn worshiper so when Yahweh first started he was a Saturn worshiper supposedly according to their doctrine well watch this if you wake up, at, okay, you Sabbath ends. Let's say you keep a seventh day Sabbath. Let me show you how to count to your next Sabbath, okay? And you might want to pull out a notepad, take some notes because some of you may need it. You got this God of this world blinding your eyes. If you can't see what I'm saying, okay, and I'm going to make perfect sense for you. After Sabbath comes to a close, you'll end up on saturday night at sundown because friday sundown to saturday sundown is the seventh day sabbath it don't matter where you're living our father knows your heart okay if you're checking into jerusalem to find out what time they're keeping the sabbath and such you know you're not there do you think when someone got on a ship and they went across to some other land and the and the sun set later that they was calling jerusalem on their you know, dinosaur bone or something, you know. Hey, Jerusalem, uh, how long we got, you know. Let, let me check myself, you know, my uh, my watch here, you know. What time do you all have a sunset over there today, man? This wasn't going on. When they saw the sun go down, they knew that Sabbath began when it went down on a sixth day, which is a Friday, is sunset. You stop your works, you don't cook. You don't clean. Everything you should have done, do before the Sabbath. That's why you have a preparation day. It's it's Friday during the day. Or if you got to make prep a couple days of the week, do it. Get ready for the Sabbath. It's a delight. <laughs> you get to rest from your works. And you can look at some things. You know, you're not supposed to be playing your video games and such, you know. Uh, that's doing your own pleasure. You should be more into prayer, you know. Fellowship's great. 
been a long time. I mean, this is how I get my fellowship, you know, people write comments, whatever. But anyway, the end of the Sabbath comes. It is now the seventh day of the week at its end, beginning the first day of the week, which is Sunday. So you go to bed and you wake up on Sunday, which is the first day you go to work. Now at sunset, what you do is you take a toothpick. You say, well, that was one work day. You go to bed, you wake up on Monday morning. Go to work, you get home and get the family all together. Say, okay, guys, we're going to count the day. This is our second work day that we had. Okay, you always blessed us with employment. La da 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 da. Here we go. It is now sunset. Let us put in our toothpick to mark our second day. Okay, so then you come around to Tuesday. Tuesday evening, boom. Wednesday, Wednesday evening, boom. Thursday, Thursday evening, boom. Friday, and come to the evening. It's like, look guys, we got six days completed. Now we start our Sabbath right at sunset. And how many days? Look, right here. I took them right up. Did you, I took, you take my word for it. I, I'm trying to keep them so you can see I'm not adding to or taking away from. But watch. One work day. Two work day. <laughs> two. Two work days. Three. Three work days. Four, five, six. Six work days. And then you rest on the seventh day. It's a Sabbath. So what do you do then? Well, you take all your toothpicks out and you set them aside. And you've got no work. On the Sabbath, you took all the work out. So you got them all set aside and you got a day with no work. Now you could do the same thing, you know, with the seven candlestick menorah, which most every Yadai had family, I mean, handed down from generations. What do you think these things were for? They didn't have a Gregorian calendar to give them seven days a week, they only had seven candlesticks. Or they could have used six workday. Now you can also do the same with seven. All you got to do is start off Saturday evening. It does, or I shouldn't say Saturday evening because that's that would actually be Friday night. When when see Friday has an evening, then it has a night, and then a day, and then when Saturday comes, it has an evening. Friday only has one evening. It started right there at sunset. Now that it's sunset on Friday, the other side of it, and Saturday begins, that's the evening. Okay, which is another thing. Okay, at evening, you're supposed to uh, kill the Passover lamb on the 14th day of the first new moon. Passover's never, as far as I've ever seen in my calculations, never has it been a Sabbath day because you are commanded to cook the goat or the lamb. Yes, I did make a mistake. It's the goat or the lamb. So all of you saying you're the 144,000 and wanting to also say that our king was killed on the Passover, you know, and became our Passover lamb or what? Horseshit. In fact, Scripture tells you right straight out and why some things it takes our king to reveal to those that the books were given to so I could reveal it to others as well is that, you know, there is one Scripture that talks about how our king was walking around on the first day of unleavened bread. Yeah, it's in every version. Read it for yourself. You'll see it now. It's in there. Anyway, he's talking about his rest here. I showed you how to count. He just mentioned that this was, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on the wise, and Yahweh did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, my Sabbath, seventh day Sabbath specifically, not a lunatic Sabbath, 
Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. Yes, some must. Three out of four fall away. Some must enter in. I've entered in and I'm never walking out of it again. You can chop my head off before I do that. I, I told you guys right from the start. That was the very first thing I told you when you came to me with that horse shit you was preaching. I said, well, it says it's the seventh day Sabbath. How can you do this lunar thing? And, and at the beginning of the month, I think it was the first time they showed me, oh, well, we counted off nine days, I think it was. And it was our Sabbath. And then from, you know, that, every... Uh, uh, 8th and 15th and 22nd and 29th are seven day Sabbaths but somehow they get screwed up see you know and hopefully we'll get into that because manna even okay Yahweh had talked about manna every seven days you were not to gather it every six days you were to gather it the seventh day do I need to pull out my toothpicks and count them again can you count? There was nothing mentioned about no lunar Sabbath going on. It didn't say every uh, work six days gathering it and then you'll work seven days gathering it and sometimes you'll work nine days gathering it but then after that you don't gather it because if you do it'll stink and go bad and then from after like the seven uh, the uh six or the eighth or the ninth uh day after a new moon when you start keeping your uh uh lunatic sabbath there then um well, those are certain times that will make an adjustment for you to do your lunar stuff because y'all having a problem keeping every six days gathering the stuff and then resting on the next day, you know. I mean, y'all are y'all don't even know how to count. You don't have no seven candlestick menorahs. There wasn't any of that thing kind of like uh, made for the holy temple even or any other reason. And you, you never had these fellas, you know, that would, you know, like town criers throughout the ages, you know. It's six o'clock got an hour before the Sabbath, you know, and they'd blow trumpets and stuff, letting you know when the Sabbath was, because men were paid to keep track of it, and everybody, you know, when you're working, like a child, oh, 214 days, mama, before Christmas, they can count, you know, I mean, when you have a baby born, you know, it's like, well, how old is it? Well, it's 16 minutes and 47, 48, 49, 50, 53 seconds old well how old is it well it's 14 days 7 hours and 32 minutes well how old is he well he's uh 37 days 14 hours and 3 minutes well how old is he oh he's 114 I mean they can count the days of a baby's life but the most desirable thing you should look forward to is the Sabbath if you love this law you look forward to the Sabbath and you can't count six and then rest on the seventh day where in the hell is the Gregorian calendar in that I mean the Romans are the ones you know that invented that but they kept the seven day week as well because on the first day the Yadayim kept the seventh day Sabbath they didn't like that stuff in Mithra worship so on the first day of a week which is Sunday they would worship their son God Mithra or whatever name you want to call it and they did this every week they look in their history ever since they started it. They never lost track of when it was. They even know when to keep their Christmases and Easter's. They, they do these calculations. They know how to keep the pagan feast that our father hates. There's no calculation other than counting to six. Six! 
forget counting the seventh day if you want to. Just say it's a, it's, well, you know, it's one of those invisible days, man. Um, you know, in the calculation there for lunar tick Sabbath keeping, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's like a day that just, you know, didn't exist or something, man. So pretend that the seventh day ain't got a number on it. But you work six days and just know that the day without a name at all, you rest. And then after the sun sets after that, well, then you work six more days. Use toothpicks. For crying out loud, get yourself a piece of paper and draw boxes, you know, with numbers in it and X them out. You don't even need a watch or a computer, nothing. You can do this. For we which have believed do enter into their rest. This is Hebrews 4.3. For we which have believed do enter into their rest. And you all did believe at one time. You kept the Sabbath. You told people that you wasn't going to work in the Sabbath. You got fired from your job sometimes. <coughs> And you went to services and you kept the seventh day Sabbath before you went on to chewing on that horse shit. Some of us just didn't leave. Yahshua calls many. Few choose it. Will you choose this day? Are kings still being lenient? You know, that ceiling hasn't taken place yet. Three out of four is going to fall away. Just know, when the ceiling takes place, if you're into this lunar Sabbath crap, Ola. You're not going to be there. You're not going to have a ceiling. You're going to be bothered by them little critters that are out there seeking those that don't have the Father's name in their forehead because us, we of the 144,000, we're going to pass on that ceiling to all that multitude that no man can count. Kind of like a reverse Amway thing, you know. I mean, it's free of charge, you know. <laughs> but it starts out with 144,000 who teach 144,000 to teach 144,000 to, you know, however many. It's a multitude no man can count. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and Yahweh did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my Sabbath or my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. See, you never loved the Sabbath to begin with. That's what I'm trying to tell you here. If you're into this lunar Sabbath crapola and you say you're of the 144,000, you never loved the law to begin with. You never loved the seventh day Sabbath. You said you did. You were a liar. You were a, a poser, man. You know? A poser. That's what you're a poser. Hopefully, you can be saved from what you've done. I, I'd be seeking the king, but don't forget, you know, you got Esau out there, too. He, he, he sold his birthright. Hope you're not making money off the seventh day, uh, uh, or not the seventh, well, either that or this lunar crap. You're making money either, you know, like Paul Begley out there, you know. I used to listen to the guy, but I used to like listening to some of his things, you know. I couldn't handle so much as, uh, you know, as his beginnings of every video it seems a little childish to me but he's got a following so I just pray that they'll listen to what he says he makes a lot of sense but he doesn't teach you to keep the commandments or the laws that define how to keep them or to put your trust in Yahshua though he does say Yahshua here and there you know and and I just hope the guy repents he needs to see these things too but on his videos he's, he's giving these uh, for money He's plugging people's commercials and such, you know, and you won't find commercials on mine. I, I don't want no money off it. I don't want you clicking onto a video of mine on a Sabbath day to where there's a commercial generating money for me. It's all free of charge when you do these things, you know, because there's no advertisement, and I'm not asking for don. You won't find a donation button on my site here, okay? My information is free. 
And the Holy Spirit's testifying to you that the information I have is valid and that you should listen to me. You should heed my voice and prove these things. I'm reading right here to you. Hebrews 4, 6. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. You didn't love the Sabbath. You would have never left it for that lunar crap. Hebrew 4, 7. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. And I'm telling you, if you can hear our king's voice, because he's coming right out of my mouth. Holy Spirit's in that video. You know what I'm saying is true. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Repent. Humble yourself. Pray. He'll hear you. He'll heal your land. He'll forgive you of your sins. But... You're calling out to Yahweh right now and he ain't hearing you because you have not gone through his son. You're a lunatic. How could you go through his son when you're a lunatic? You can't. You can't hear him. The God of the world has made your mind a lunatic palace. And you're lunatic in everywhere. Hebrew 4, 7, again, he limiteth a certain day, saying to David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. It's been a very long time since you've kept the seventh day Sabbath, fellas and gals, guys and gals, and puppy dog tails. Hebrews 4, 8. For if, and I'm going to say the name here, but I'm only going to say because, you know, of what some teachings want to teach, and it's incorrect. You get into some commentaries because, you know, some people from hundreds of years ago or whatever thought that they would go ahead and, and tell you what the scriptures are saying. And these people didn't even have salvation. They weren't in the 144,000. The scriptures weren't written for them to become such a part of them to begin with. Not, not till the 144,000 came. And, and what we do is we speak these words in such a way that they open up in you and they're written on your inward parts because you can't forget them. Okay, now here it talks about this Jesus had given them rest. Now, in some of the commentaries, it says that that is Yahshua and that in some versions of Holy Bibles, it also uses our King's name instead of Jesus as Yahshua. Okay. Uh, J-O-S-H-U-A, something like that. And some want you to think that this is who they were talking about because when he took them into the promised land, blah, 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 has nothing to do with it. This is actually our king it's speaking of. For if Yahshua, our Messiah, had given them rest, a Sabbath, had he had changed... The seventh day Sabbath to a lunar tech Sabbath, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? He didn't say no calculations about this lunar tech Sabbath to me. He said it was a promise that he left behind. He left to us for any. Let us therefore, verse 1 of chapter 4 of Hebrews, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. You lunatics are falling short of it. He said right here, for if Yahshua our Messiah had given them rest, had given them a different day than what he was keeping his entire life, and it said that, he never sinned. And the only way you could sin is to break a law or a commandment. So he didn't break the Sabbath. He may have broke the Sabbath according to the Talmud, the Babylonian Mesratic whatever you want to call it, the, the traditions of men that our king came against. And when he healed on the Sabbath, he was doing our father's work. That's what he was doing, our father's work. Now, if he had came and not sinned 
by keeping the seventh day Sabbath. I, I mean, they didn't lose it from even on the ark. No one knew the seventh day Sabbath. He probably had straws or something that the camels didn't eat. And he was counting with six straws. Okay, this one day for work, this second day. And in those days, they was tuned in, you know. I mean, the melatonin and everything, when evening came in, they started shutting down. When morning came, they was probably up a little before the light. So they knew when sunsets were at. Because the melatonin put it into sleep. We don't have so much of that anymore. I don't. I never did. <coughs> but he could keep the seventh day Sabbath. And it says, this is a promise to you. If you'll turn. Okay, read in Revelations 2. It says, you know, that you left your first love. If you really did love the seventh day Sabbath and left it, I pity you. I mean, I, I know what it's like when I had left. You know, I, I started playing chess on the Sabbath, trying to get converts. You know, teaching them to break the Sabbath while trying to teach them to keep the laws. I was, you know, I went through a lot of hypocritical stuff, but I don't do that anymore. I got my butt whooped, and it says, and in Hebrews 4, 5, And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. So do it, please. So then in Hebrews 4, 8, it says, For if Yahshua, our King, our Messiah, who came and didn't sin... He laid his life down so that you can have forgiveness, no longer needing cattle or chicken, not chickens, chickens was never used for a sacrifice, but, uh, you know, except unless you're like into uh, voodoo or some kind of crap, but, you know, our king gave his blood so that you could be forgiven of your past sins, what you're guilty of death for, and when the blood is on you, if you ever got it. It washes away all your past sins. And you should know enough. Your preacher should be telling you enough that you should know the difference between the clean and the unclean and the holy and the unholy or profane. That's what he should be teaching you. If he ain't, quit paying him. He's a liar. He's, he's a soul sucker. And anyway, this is the 144,000 I'm rebuking right now. For if Yahshua had given them rest, if he changed the day for them, even after he was nailed to the tree and put in the tomb and rose again and came back, did he teach a different Sabbath day? A different seventh day Sabbath? Because the disciples were still counting all the way up to Pentecost after our king came and, and saw him alive. Before the Holy Spirit came on them. They were still dumbasses. I mean, they didn't even know that... When Kepha denied our king three times before the uh, cock crowed, the scriptures just before that explain how all the disciples fell away. And that's what you people have done. They're keeping the lunar Sabbath that claimed you're of the 144,000. You yeah, fell away. It's time to wake up now. Get rid of these childish doctrines. We're not going to allow it. You'll be put outside the camp if you do try to teach it. 4, 8 of Hebrews. For if Yahshua had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Well, you show me where he did. And therefore, Hebrews 4, 9 says, Therefore remaineth, or there remaineth, Therefore, let me read that again because somehow our king forgot about the Sabbath. He promised us. The disciples promised us that we would have the seventh day Sabbath. But yet somehow it got lost. Someone forgot the count. They lost the toothpick. Oh, hell, we only got five toothpicks now. What do we do? Oh, well, there goes the Sabbath. Damn it. I hate it when we lose the Sabbath. But it's never written anywhere in any historical books that they lost the Sabbath day. You know? I mean, they don't keep the feast at the right times because they use a crescent moon. It's a worship thing, you know? And we're not going to teach with the crescent moon either. I mean, some of those times when you got crescent moon worshipers and they're in organizations, they got people all across the world. 
Well, you know, the main organization, they've already got up all their money collecting feasts set up and everything and, and stuff prophesied what day the feast is going to start and everything. And, you know, and everyone's out there looking for the crescent. They don't see it. And they're all saying, oh, man, well, the calendar's going to be wrong. Oh, man. Calendars. Man, what are we going to do now? You know, we're going to have to keep the feast a day later starting, I guess. And everyone's going to have to tell their boss. Well, all of a sudden, the new moon was spotted in Hawaii. The elder Kahulawaka, he said that the new moon is spotted in, in Hawaii. So we're on for the feast. Well, they didn't have that convenience in the days of our, you know, our King David. But he knew every 14.765 days or from a new moon, there'd be a full moon. And every 14.765 days afterwards. And these were farmers. They knew these things. They knew, they had town criers. They had astronomers that knew everything about the stars. And I'm not talking about the astrology stuff where they were, you know, fortune telling. All, no, that wasn't what they were doing. They were keeping track of the signs in the heavens. And they knew. They, they dedicated their lives to keeping everyone on track for the Sabbath. Even after the temple was destroyed, they still kept the Sabbaths. And it says in Hebrews 4, 9, there remaineth therefore a rest, a Sabbath, to the people of Yahweh. So if you're keeping a lunar Sabbath and not the seventh day Sabbath, it says in Hebrews 4, 4, for he spoke in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and Yahweh did rest on the seventh day from all his works, and he counted up six days he worked. The seventh day, he took the works out of his jug. Oh, you can't tell me I always got a jug in the scriptures. Lying teacher, lying hypocrite. For if Yahshua had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest, a Sabbath to the people of Yahweh. For he that is entered into his Sabbath, his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works as Yahweh did from his. Let us labor therefore, let us work six days a week. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that Sabbath, that seventh day rest, lest any man fall after the example of unbelief. For the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And I hope you're getting yourselves cleaved up into little teeny pieces, crying out for forgiveness of your lunar ticking. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Yes, he knows the intents of your heart. If you've been teaching people just so you have a following to rejoice in the sinful nature that you have provoked over the years to replace Holy Spirit if you ever had it in you, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest, Yahshua our King, that is passed into the heavens, Yahshua the Son of Yahweh, let us hold fast our profession. It's your profession to keep the seventh day Sabbath. It's all in the same chapter. What's wrong with you, knuckleheads? Yes, I'm pissed at you. You sucked all the energy out of me, okay? Satan's done nothing but hop up and down on me, and you've been pointing in my direction, trying to convert me to your <laughs> lunar ticking. This, this shouldn't even be talked about among the believers. Seeing them that we have a high priest that is passed into the heavens, Yahshua, the Son of Father Yahweh, let us hold fast our profession, our work, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling 
of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. He never sinned. He never broke the Sabbath. And he never changed the Sabbath. And he promised we'd have the Sabbath. And that we'd enter into his rest. And he said it remaineth. And yet you want to convert people to break the Sabbath. Shame on you. And hopefully that's all you'll have is shame. And you'll repent. Because otherwise you're going to be ashes. If that's how easy you get off with it. But if you're one of those that invented this stuff. You're in trouble. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of the pardon and mercy. Which comes on you from our king. Forgiving you of your past sins. Because you won't get that blood. Unless you promise him. And you've showed our Heavenly Father that you'll keep His Ten Commandments the best you can. And the 600 laws that define how the Ten Commandments must be kept. The school teacher. The school teacher will bring you to our Father. Once you learn to honor the Father, the Father can then give you to His Son. And you can only honor Him by the Ten Commandments and the 613 laws. And then you can honor the Father by honoring his son the same way you honored the father by keeping the Ten Commandments as the school teacher taught you and the 613 laws which brings you to our king so then you can have faith you'll never break the laws or commandments for any reason when you're given to the king and that's why you pray to Yahweh right now because you're not given to the king if you was you'd know it and I'm going to show these people, and Holy Spirit's going to be poured out on all of mankind. And they're going to hear the voice, and they're going to know our King's voice. Because when I speak, they're going to hear it. And when they speak, they'll be doing the same. But you, la you, you lunatics, man. Sorry. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of pardon and mercy, uh, the pardon and acquittal that we may obtain mercy and find pardon and acquittal to help in time of need. Okay, that was Hebrews 4. It tells you to keep a seventh day Sabbath, does it not? Okay, now a lot of y'all won't even work on a, a new moon that you use for your lunar ticking. Yeah, I don't know if you keep it as a Sabbath. It, it all depends. Some of you mow lawns and everything on the... Uh, uh, the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th days, you know, it's kind of like, oh, my, my ox is in the ditch. Well, my ox is in the barn, and he's hungry, you know, so I'm just going to start it up and feed him my lawn, you know. Uh, and you keep, I mean, once you learn to be a lunatic, it comes so easy for you to disregard scriptures to keep your deception. That's what's going on. And your mind is blinded by the God of this world. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, we read that first thing. And this is talking about Ezra. So anyway, Ezra 7 verse 9, it says, For upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon. So he's leaving Babylon on the first day of the first month. And the first day of the first month just so occurs to be the first day of the green ears of barley, okay? The, the count for the feast up to uh, Passover, which is not the same as the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yes, you do eat a little unleavened bread with the Passover meal. But you could still have leavened bread in your house. You're just not supposed to eat it with the meal. You eat unleavened bread with the meal. And then on the next day, you burn up all the leaven that you have. You make sure you got no bread or anything that would make uh, bread rise. Okay, dough rise. You get rid of it. You burn it up. And then in the evening, for the 15th day, which starts at sunset on Passover, okay, at the end of Passover, when the sun sets, begins the evening of the first evening of unleavened bread, the first day, which becomes a Sabbath, no matter what day it's on. The first and the last day of a feast is always going to be a Sabbath. But you've got 
the Feast of Unleavened Bread and you eat unleavened bread for seven days. You eat unleavened bread. You have to eat it every day or else you're not, you know, worthy of the family. <coughs> you can't eat a little unleavened. You can make it all different ways. You can put sugar and everything in there, okay? All different kinds of stuff. But anyway, this is the first day of that moon. And this guy's out doing a journey, okay? So these feasts that, you know, people try to say, well, the new moons, you know, uh, King Saul was keeping them, you know, and he keep them for day after day there, you know, like King David was pointing out, hey, they're going to keep this new moon festival where they, I mean, put it this way, fellas, if you're out in the field and you work all day and you go home and you don't even ever run and shower, okay? Because they haven't really been invented yet, unless you go under a waterfall or something, okay? They didn't have this computer for you to watch these videos. All you did was you worked, you went home, you ate or whatever, you had a little bit of in fellowship talking to people, but they didn't have televisions. They didn't have vehicles. When you went somewhere, you normally walked. You probably only had one thing of clothes. The wealthy had two garments or more, <laughs> you know. I mean, you're looking at things in such a way, you, you, you put too much of man's thoughts into your heart and not enough of our kings. And you're not letting Holy Spirit enter in there either when you're preaching these silly things. Ezra 7 verse 9, For upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon. And then, and on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem. So he's doing these journeys on these show, and they're not Sabbaths. But they did have festivals. I mean, you're out there working six days a week. You look forward to the Sabbath day, a day of feasting. You know, you can feast. It's not a feast feast day. It's not one of the three feasts, you know, that her father calls you out for, or four, or five, whatever, you know, it's conglomerated in the three different areas of the circuit. But, anyway, on the first day of the month, the first month, which is for the first month in the circuit, the seventh month, however, the new moon of the seventh month, that is a Sabbath day. All the other new moons aren't. This guy's traveling. I just wanted to show you that. So that argument's blowed out the water. And then, of course, we get to part of the lunar ticking thing here. You know, see, way back there, you know, after most of us had left, I had left, you know, before some of them did. I was beat up, put in jail, and stayed there three nights and three days uh, because I didn't agree with their doctrine. I did no violence, but they sure whooped my butt, okay? And uh, part of that was over the, uh, you know, the teaching, the doctrines. You can read about these things, you know, in Revelations chapter 2 and 3. It'll tell you, you know, these are things that went on in my life, these different chapters. You know, I went through these things. I could explain them in detail. Okay, it's all documented. But here in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 15. He's going to tell you, and, and you know, this is the first time they came up to me, and I told them seven days, okay? Well, then they came up again, trying to pervert, uh, convert me, and they were giving me a bunch of this manure about how they lost track of the Sabbaths, and, and you know, that somehow calculation now all I've ever asked him is show me a scripture man show me a scripture where it tells you how to count these lunatic Sabbaths just just show me a scripture where our king made a different day show it to me and I'll follow you <laughs> I will I'll follow, but you can't do it and I brought up this and then they created this false doctrine out of it as well that I just found out has gone worldwide I can't believe it you know so that's why I'm prompted to bring this video as well to tell you the damage you caused to this world and I, I think our king's going to whoop your asses it says Leviticus 23 verse 15 and ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath okay well this is the 
sheaf and the wave offering that they had to bring before the Father. Okay, so you've got Passover, which is never a Sabbath that I've ever seen, because you got to cook the lamb. Okay, on that day, and then the beginning of the next day, which sometimes I've seen fall on a regular seventh day Sabbath, you know, as well as the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. But if the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread was a Sabbath, well, you would keep the Sabbath. And then on the morrow after the Sabbath, which will always be on a Sunday, okay, now. Let's say that Thursday was the day that the Feast of Unleavened Bread started. That was the first day on a Thursday. Okay? But then that's the Sabbath of the day. The first day and the last day of a feast are always going to be a Sabbath. But Thursdays aren't a seventh day Sabbath. So anyway, you keep that is a Sabbath. You can cook, of course, you know, you're not to do your work and that kind of stuff, you know, but, you know, sometimes because these feasts fall in such a way that the food would have to be kept over for three days if you weren't allowed to cook on the first and last day of a Sabbath, unless it falls on a seventh day Sabbath. No, never, no reason whatsoever do you cook or boil on a seventh day Sabbath. You don't do it. You don't do your own work, your own pleasures and stuff. Now, you can sit there and watch. There's a great movie called uh, The Book of John or The Gospel of John or something like that. You can watch on YouTube three hours long or so. Excellent. It, it'll, it'll make you see how the people actually lived and it'll open up scriptures in a different way when you read them. You'll see them differently anyway. But anyway, the feast say started on a Thursday. Well, the seventh day Sabbath is what it's talking about here. Is on the morrow after the Sabbath during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Okay, now whether the first day fell on a Sabbath or not don't matter, but we're saying on a Thursday it started so you can see that when the seventh day Sabbath came around they would keep the Sabbath and then it says and ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. Okay? After the Sabbath, the morrow after, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So what you do is the day after, when they bring the sheaf offering, well, the next Sabbath is the first Sabbath in a seven Sabbath count. And I knew this, and I told these lunatics back then, I said, look, guys, there is no way you can calculate 49 days from seven seven-day Sabbaths unless it's 49 days. And there's no way you can come up with 49 days from seven lunatic Sabbaths. Because when you see the new moon, you have a certain count that sometimes you might have, you know, eight or nine days before you have a Sabbath. And then you keep three Sabbaths after that, seven-day Sabbaths, and then do your lunar ticking again where you might get three days, you know, to what, or however you do it, you know, you're count, it, I don't know, because... I've tried to see what y'all do, but it makes absolutely no sense to me. It's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. And here, you know, I'm telling you, it's like, hey, you know, it says seven Sabbaths. You take seven seven-day Sabbaths, and then just like it says in this verse, it says, seven Sabbaths shall be complete, even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number 50 days. So when you take seven Sabbaths and it's 49 days, and then on the morrow when you number it, you want one day, two day, three day, four day, five, all the way up to 49 days, and then on the morrow after the 49th day is what? 50! But you can never get this. So then you know what this doctrine, these brilliant, deceived men that have their minds blinded, and I'm sorrowful for you. I mean, you suck me dry, man. You make me weary. I loved you boneheads, but I'm telling you what, I'm willing to leave you behind.
when you're suffering, I'll be rejoicing, saying you had your opportunity, you know, and, and you chose to kick our, our king in the teeth. Shame on you. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, which should be the 49th day. Seven times seven is 49, no matter how, what, which way you dice it, slice it, or, or cook it, man. Can't cook the books down from seven times seven being anything but 49. Even unto the morrow, the day after, the seventh Sabbath, shall ye number. You'll number it. That day after the morrow will be numbered as 50 days. And ye shall offer a new meat offering unto Yahweh. So what these guys did, because they know I proved them wrong. Using scripture, I proved them wrong. And you know what they say? Oh, no, no. You're reading it wrong, Al. Look at right there, man. Look at that, Al. Right there. Look at that. It says, you count off seven lunar Sabbaths, and then the day after, you count 50 more days. That's what God tells you right there, Al. God tells you. Well, I don't listen to God. <laughs> you know? I don't listen to the gods. I don't listen to these, these demons. It says, next verse. Well, let me read that again. Just so you, uh, uh, you hear it. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number 50 days. You shall number it the 50 days. Why didn't he just say uh, 99 days, fellas? Why didn't he just say, count for yourself 99 days? Is it a number too high to count? Well, I'll tell you what, every man that has a male child, I think it is, or is it a female? I think it's a female. Yeah, I think when you have a female, it's one or the other. One is like uh, uh, 80 days a man has to wait. And that's only if the woman stops bleeding and all that kind of stuff, okay, and is ready for any kind of intimate relation. They have to wait 80 days, and I've been through that several times, I'm telling you, and I counted. I didn't need toothpicks, man. I didn't have to have nothing. I was counting down. It, it was something in my mind saying, hey, man, because that's where my mind was registered back in those days, you know, it was into the self-gratifications. You know, people, I'm going to tell you right straight out. If you're using condoms or you're trying to uh, avoid being pregnant, it's only because you're out there fornicating and committing adultery. Or you got married for the wrong purpose. See, when you get married, it's for the purpose of having children. So, if you wear a condom there, buddy, so that you could have all the whoop de doos without the obligation. Our king opens and he closes the womb. You can't make a woman pregnant. Our king's got to open that up. So when you wear a condom, you're doing nothing more than that one fella there, you know, that had a bunch of brothers that the wife, you know, she was, you know, they kept dying, you know, all the way down to him, you know, and, and he gets there and, uh, sure, he liked the sex part, but then he would get off and he would drop his seed on the ground. And it pissed our father off enough, he killed him too. Read the story for yourself, it's there. What do you think these condoms are doing or the birth control? Don't you know children are a gift? And if you're not in it for children, that you can have a family so you could understand these scriptures a little bit better. You know, because that's what a family does. You get to see it from a different perspective. And that's why it says deacons are supposed to at least have one wife. So anyway, you account from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Seven times seven is forty-nine. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, the day after the seventh Sabbath, you shall number it fifty days. Not count fifty more days to it. And of course we've got Moshe here, and you know they're out here uh, getting manna. This is Exodus 16:25, and Moshe said, "Eat that today, for today is a Sabbath unto Yahweh. 
today ye shall uh, not find it in the field. Six days ye shall gather it, but the seventh day, the seventh day, only need six toothpicks. Pretend the seventh day don't even exist except, you know, for you to come out of the world on. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. There won't be any manna on the seventh day. Yes, they was counting all the way up to them seven days so that they wouldn't be hungry. They wanted the food. Now, I did some research, and there's this fellow. I'm going to leave a uh, Lunar Sabbath uh, uh, HTML thing there for you, okay? And and basically, uh, he's a fellow that I liked some of what he said. I don't agree with everything he did, but he did a lot of research on why you shouldn't do the lunar ticking either. And he's got, uh, this is not what Yahweh commanded, as lunar do, and I put this part, as lunar dudes want to claim and this is uh, sarcasm that he uses and I find it very appropriate for you people that want to break my father's laws and teach it to others and this ain't the least of commandments no the Sabbath isn't if you broke the least of commandments like it says in Matthew 5 verse 17 through about 31 there if you break the least of commandments you'll be considered the least in the kingdom what do you do when you break the biggie like the seventh day? That's one of the Ten Commandments, man. In the fella, his sarcasm that I really enjoy goes this way. On the day following the new moon of each month, six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh your Elohim. And I hate that, but... You shall do this for four weeks. Then... Depending on whether the new moon has started, you shall not engage in commerce or paid work for one or two days. Then you shall reset your week into the six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest pattern. Now, I don't believe our king ever told you to do that kind of stuff. I don't believe Moshe told you to do that kind of stuff. And I don't believe our Heavenly Father told you to do that stuff. It's not what Yahweh commanded. Okay? What Yahweh commanded, and I hope you got a pencil out or you can just read it for yourself. Okay? I'm going to read through some scriptures here to show you if there's any importance... And, of course, they, they, like I say, they try to use the moon being created as if it sets the Sabbaths, and it don't. It never did. It had nothing to do with it. It was created on the fourth day. Yahweh rested on the seventh. It has nothing to do with their lunar ticking calculations. It's a very simple thing. Watch, I'll show you. Here, Deuteronomy 12, verse 32. Whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. You shall not add to it nor take away from it. Don't add to these commandments. Don't take away from the commandments. You did both. You took away the seventh day Sabbath and you put in its place, you added in its place this lunar tick bullshit. Quit it. Genesis 2, 1 through 3. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, Yahweh ended his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then Yahweh blessed the seventh day. He blessed the seventh day. The same way he blesses a woman's womb with child. But the woman refuses the gift by killing off that which would bring life to begin with. Or the man by not allowing it to be there. Out there just for their own satisfaction. Sure, enjoy your wife, but when you have children, enjoy your children. Verse 3 of Genesis 2, verse 3. Then Yahweh blessed the seventh day. He didn't bless the first day, didn't bless the ninth day. 
You didn't bless the 15th, the 14th, uh, the 8th, the 15th, 22nd, 29th, or the 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th. He didn't bless those days. He blessed every seventh day. Six days work is to be done. Seventh day is a day of rest and he created it and he promised we'd have it if you would keep it. You didn't have to discover through this lunatic bullshit when to keep this lunatic and Sabbath that aren't on the seventh day. You can't keep a whole month of them and have them all on the seventh day. Quit it. You add it to the law. And you took away from it your own salvation. That's what you took away. You didn't take that from the law. They think to change it. And I'm here to tell you that they changed it wrong. Then Yahweh blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which Yahweh had created and made. Exodus 20, 9 through 10. Now I'm asking you, you show me scriptures like I'm showing you scriptures right here. Right here. Get your Bible out. Pull it up. Blow off the dust. Wake up. If you think you're the 144,000, you better start teaching these things. I'm going to show you scripture after scripture where it tells you right here when to keep a Sabbath. And you're going to lie against my king saying that he forgot it? And he was so lacking in diligence that when our father turned everything over to him that he was negligent on the Sabbath and let us all forget it? No. You need to forget your lunar Sabbath. Pretend it was like a bad tattoo, man. You want to get it off. Exodus 29 through 10. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh your father. That's one proof I have that you're to keep every seventh day as a holy Sabbath. Okay? That's one. Show me one scripture where it says that from the new moon, when you see a crescent, just show me that. You show me that a month is set when you see the new moon's crescent. Show me that in scripture, okay? And I'll take back all these words. Just show me that. Unless it's talking about the pagan god worship, which is where crescents used mostly in the scripture all two or three times is talked about, you know, as in pagan jewelry. But Exodus 20, 9 through 10, six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh your father. Exodus 23, 12, six days you shall do your work. And on the seventh day you shall rest. There's two witnesses. Exodus 31, 15. Work shall be done for six days. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest, holy to Yahweh. There's three times. Exodus 31, 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days... Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. That's four. Exodus 24, 21. Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day you shall rest. There's five. Exodus 35, 2. Work shall be done for six days, but the seventh day shall be a holy day for you, a Sabbath day of rest to Yahweh. Okay, how many more do I need to show you? I ask you for one. One little scripture, and you can't even show it, but you're out there buffaloing everybody. You got my brother Shul turned upside down and inside out. You don't know what to do. Thinking you got to use the moon because of you lying bastards telling your heresies to him about things that shouldn't be spoken of. No, not by brothers. I don't believe you're a brother right now because you certainly don't hear my father through his son. And you don't hear the son because you don't hear the Holy Spirit. You're too dang busy there with your mind filled with the God of this world. In your own worldly ways. Amos speaks against you. They all speak against you. They also speak for you. And they said the holy Malachim will rejoice if you'll repent. Turn from your wicked and evil ways. 
Now please pay close attention to what Yahweh has said. He blessed and sanctified one day. Twice he called it Sabbath day. And twice he called it seventh day, fourth of the Ten Commandments. And he says it right here, Exodus 20, 8 through 11. He calls it Sabbath day twice and twice the seventh day. Exodus 20, 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember it, to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh your Father. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor the stranger, your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days, he's repeating it. Why? Because they were a stiff-necked and rebellious people just like you are, saying you're the 144,000 and you keep this lunar tick day. <coughs> For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. The seventh day he hallowed it. And except for two times, well, you might get like seven or eight Sabbaths in a, a year, maybe, that actually fall on a regular seventh day. But if you're keeping your lunar Sabbaths, mowing your lawns and doing your own pleasures and such, then it falls on the seventh day Sabbath. That's a pretty bad double whammy right there for you. Like it says here in Exodus 20, verse 11. Once again, I want you to hear it. For in six days Yahweh made heavens and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Leviticus 23, 4, six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is this. I mean, read these things, people, please, read these things. Okay, that's just another one like we had spoke of earlier when I was counting them off. Here's the other, this is Leviticus Excuse me, Leviticus 23, verse 4. He says, Six days shall work be done. And this is, not, this is the feast chapter of Leviticus, okay? And it's telling you. Again, six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of solemn rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work on it. It is the Sabbath of Yahweh in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of Yahweh, holy convocations, which you shall proclaim at their appointed times. Now there's a separation. He first says it's a Sabbath day, it's a solemn rest, it's a holy convocation. That's what the Sabbath is. He doesn't say it's a feast. But then after he tells you what the Sabbath is, then he says, These are the feasts of Yahweh, holy convocations, which you shall proclaim at their appointed meeting. And then he goes on to tell you the feasts. It's kind of like where someone says, Hey, throw the cow over the fence. They were looking at each other. Well, I don't think I'm strong enough to throw the cow over the fence. But then the fellow finishes and he says, Some hay. See, so it kind of changes the whole subject matter. You don't throw the cow over the fence. Like he said, throw the cow over the fence. Some hay. It was just a little separation. That's what just took place right here. He talks about the Sabbath. No work to be done in your dwellings. Then verse 4. These are the feasts of Yahweh. What are? I'm going to tell you what they are. These are the feasts of Yahweh. They're to be proclaimed at their appointed times in their holy convocations. And then he begins by telling you what these feasts are. He says, On the fourteenth day of the first month at twilight, or evening, when the sun sets, the fourteenth day, when it first begins at that sunset, that's when you're supposed to kill the lambs and everything, it's Yahweh's Passover. Our king wasn't killed in the evening. In fact, on Passover, there's scripture that says you're not to leave your house, your dwelling. And yet our king is out there in the Garden of Gethsemane. Why? Because he can break the laws? No, he would have never left the house. And then they say that he was killed around, oh, afternoon time there when all the Passover sacrifices were killed. No, it's not the law. 
For our king to have been a Passover sacrifice, he would have had to been killed after sunset on the 14th day. Doesn't take place. I'm sorry, but it just no. On the 14th day of the first month, at twilight, and this is the same one that it's talking about, that Ezra was walking, taking his journey, so it wasn't the Sabbath, neither is, you know, the first day of the, four, the uh, first month. It's not a Sabbath either, unless it actually fell on a seventh-day Sabbath. But on the 14th day of the first month at twilight is Yahweh's Passover. See, that's the Passover. The 14th day at Passover, at twilight, okay, the evening begins Passover, which goes up to the very next evening, which starts the 15th day, because this, this was the 14th, the Passover was the 14th, and it says, and on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread to Yahweh, so you begin at sunset, for seven days. On the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. So that is basically a Sabbath day, the first day of unleavened bread, no matter when it falls. And then the last day as well. I just wanted to bring that out, that Passover is not unleavened bread. Passover is not a Sabbath. And as far as I know, it's never fallen on a seventh day Sabbath. Not in any history that I've ever, and I've been keeping the Feast of uh, Unleavened Bread and Passover before that for somewhere around 40 years now, give or take. About like what they did out there in the wilderness when they wandered around. Well, I've been wandering a long time too, but now I've found the promised land here. So, and anyway, uh, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, the uh, ensigns disagreeing with other groups as to when the Sabbath was. In fact, there was no historical record of any Jewish sects disagreeing with each other on when the Sabbath was. In another interesting note, Josephus speaks of one of the large towers that were being built in Jerusalem. And it's in the uh, book, The Wars of the Jews, uh, 4 verse uh, 582. And the last was erected above the top of Pastaphoria, where one of the priests stood, of course, and gave signal beforehand with a trumpet at the beginning of every seventh day. You hear that? It says, and gave a signal beforehand with a trumpet at the beginning of every seventh day in the evening twilight, as also at the evening when the day was finished, as giving notice to the people when they were to stop work and when they were to work again. Somebody used these and then they informed all the people of it. But because we don't have town criers now, I suggest you learn how to count the six. Repent. Our king's coming, man. And I hope that uh, you're going to be in the ceiling, but you're not going to be sealed if you've got this lunar ticking in you. And I'm going to cut that off right here. There's uh, plenty more that I could bring out on this, but if that's not enough to blow this lunar Sabbath crap all right down the drain where it belongs, flush it, unlearn it. Dear friend of mine, I tell you what, she enjoys the Sabbath. She'd, she'd look at you, man, real hard, I'll tell you what, and you'd sweat. If you see, if, if, if she was keeping the Sabbath and you tried to tell her not to, yeah, that's how everybody is in the body of our king. We detest. We hate evil. I hate your ways. I love you guys. I wouldn't put up with your crap all these years if I didn't. You know, but if you're going to be in the 144,000 and not against the 144,000 as you've been ever since I brought out the videos showing where I was one and I have documentation of it it's like the world turned upside down and I've been getting demonic attacks and now I've got attacks that you're helping the devil with bring a little joy to my heart tell me how you go back to the seventh day Sabbath and you relearn these laws learn to love them because apparently you fell away just like the disciples did Kepha said, I'd never fall away. And Yahshua says, oh yeah? Well, three times you're going to deny me tonight. Now what's he say? Kepha, do you love me? 
Yeah, I'll feed my sheep. Hey, Kifa, huh? You love me? Well, yeah, man. I love you. I'll feed my sheep. Hey, Kifa, what, man? Do you love me? Damn, how many times you got to ask me that? Yeah, sure, you know, I mean, like, really, of course, I love you more than all else does. We'll feed my sheep. You better start listening to Kifa. I do. I know just what he says. He didn't tell you to eat pork either. I don't know if y'all gone that far or keeping Christmas again. But remember, children can count. Noah had 150 days on the ark before he got off. He could count. They could do that much more than they had to with six. I love you. Please repent. If you got questions, man, you got my email. Or you can leave a comment down here. Just be nice because you better realize I do expect and I'm hoping for the same judgment that I'm using against you that this judgment be on me. Because if you could show me where I'm sinning, I will rejoice in it because if I can repent, if I can actually see where I'm sinning ignorantly to where I can see it, then I'm not going to sin ignorantly no more in that area. I'm going to repent and I'm going to be glad to do it because I'll be that much closer to standing confident before our king when he returns. You might want to think about that yourself. You don't want to be ashes under the feet of the righteous. Okay, and I'm here to tell you that uh, he not called me one of those. I really thought that he called you all it. That's why I sent you the videos to begin with. I didn't mean for you to come and attack me. Uh, send curses, whatever, toward me. Calling me pompous and, you know, uh, oh, arrogant and all these things. That has nothing to do with that. I'm speaking the truth. If you can hear it, do it. I love you. You know, I hate what you do. I don't want your money. You know, when have I ever asked for your money? All I've ever asked was your love. And some of you have known you for like 30 years or so, give or take. You know, and I've never hurt you. I've never done nothing to you. I've never asked you to follow me. So why all of a sudden are you calling me a false teacher and everything else while you're lunar ticking? Now, you're either going to get in, you know, with 144,000, teach exactly as they teach, because we're not going to teach anything different than what the disciples taught. And if you think you're going to, you're going to be put out on your ass. So instead, let's get our hands up to our Heavenly Father. Father Yahweh, through your righteous Son, I pray you hear us. And Yahshua, I ask you, you know, open the doors that these men may hear. Turn on that little switch in their DNA. Let them see the error of their ways. Let me see the error of my ways. Please point out my errors. I know I'm making them. You said I would be. And I don't rejoice in that at all. I, I've never turned back to sin on anything uh, deliberately except for that one time, you know, to prove the house of Yahweh wrong where they said that, uh, you know, the sub sandwiches from ham and everything, you know, was unclean at Subway, but everything else you could eat. And I went in there and, and I actually touched the sub and everything that they had made so I could watch where they picked up the ham and then they picked up the cheese and they picked up the lettuce and, you know, with the same gloves they had the ham on and then all the other meats were all touched by it when they made different ones, you know, so... I saw it was unclean, and I touched it deliberately just so I could prove that the house of Yahweh was in sin, and I've repented of that ever since, and I've, I've never wanted to come that close to it, you know, I, I wouldn't have eaten ham, and I wouldn't use that for the, but I actually did, I did reach out and touch it so I could prove the point, made myself unclean on purpose, and you know, I've asked forgiveness of that many years and I've never deliberately since then it was bad enough to do that but you have opened your arms for me to repent and I pray you do the same thing for all these brothers and sisters out there all those that may not even be of the 144,000 they put up with this video put up with me put up with you and your words you know and actually discovered that once they start keeping your laws and your commandments that you come to them and you separate families and everything, households, mothers against fathers and, and everything because of your law. And, and all we do is open up a window to show the people. We pull off the receptacle to cover off their sins and expose their sins and they hate us. 
So I pray that, you know, through our tests and our trials, that we become perfected, that we may be the ones that stand there in the breach and call out to you, Father, through your righteous Son, that your righteous Son will rescue us all. He'll redeem us. And that's what we pray that um, all these that are in the deliver ticking, I pray that they may ask forgiveness, that they may be redeemed when our King comes. Right now we're foolish and we're ignorant in our sins, and some of us, you know, I hate to say it, and I don't know where you stand, but you're sinning willfully. You know you're doing wrong, and you're doing it anyway. I pray that you come to realize this before, you know, your, your mind, your conscience is seared, and you won't be able to repent of it. Because if you do, you know, I can't help you right now, I can. So can the other of the 144,000, they can. And those that are hearing the words, they can help you for crying out loud because they hear them and it becomes part of them. So why don't you old folk out there that have been saying you love these laws all these years, start proving that. And Yeshua, I pray you open up the switch in their DNA, whatever it takes, however you make them see the light. Let them see the error of their ways, and then judge them from there. You know, if they choose to stay ignorant and deceived, I pray you, I pray you do whatever you will with them. Let them be an example, you know, and let it be harsh and severe that all others may see it in, in fear. Your holy name. And Yahshua, I ask all these things in your righteous name, and for your name's sake, I ask that these things be done. And I say shalom to y'all out there They put up with me this far. Uh, and greetings to those of you that just wanted to hear what I had to say and may, you know, not understand because you know the God of this world, you know, right now, Holy Spirit hasn't been poured out on all flesh. So don't feel down, you know. I mean, that book, the Holy Spirit, is impregnated in the book like he is in this video and all my videos but when you open up those holy scriptures and you start putting your trust in those words even if you don't understand but you know there's a reward in there because it says that we're going to one day have peace it's not like this world has ever seen in fact i have peace i mean i'm i'm run ragged you know but it's a different kind of peace it's just my body's being tired i mean everything is is your mind when you lose a wallet what's it affect sure you might not be able to pay the rent or whatever but that has nothing to do with what it does in the mind it only hurts you here you know when you when you slam your finger in the door sure your finger seems to hurt but it's only because of your mind <coughs> letting you know your finger hurts <coughs> so protect your mind and get rid of this trash out of it okay i love y'all i hope you repent I'm going to get some sleep or something, man. I ain't done nothing in a while. I did. I had to chop a whole bunch of wood because I had to take it out on something, man. I mean, you all had me so angry, you know, turning from our king that way and then trying to push me into it again. Don't you know that the very elect cannot be deceived? So that's all I can tell right now. You're not the very elect because you're deceived. Repent.